So I'm going to teach you the long way of doing this, and then we'll do it the short way the next time. Um, the, sh the difference between the long way and the short way isn't that different. Um, it's just how many you just don't keep the you don't keep the variables. So let's go ahead and do this. So if I wanted to solve the following system, hold on. All right, so we're going to do a system of equations in several variables. We're only going to be doing three, but if you can do three, you can do any finite number. Okay. So if I wanted to solve this system, what I would do is I'd, I would take right here, I would solve this. I take this three, since I know what it is, plug it in here. Then I'll know what y is, and then I'll plug that into here. And we call this back substitution. So this is back substitution. Um, OK. So this is what back substitution is. And so here. Let's go ahead and do that. So we know z is 3. So we're going to plug it into equation 2. So we have y plus 2. We know what, what z is. That's 3 equals to 5. We solve that. And we get y equals, uh, move over the 6, we get negative 1. Okay, then we plug that all into equation 1. So I have x minus 2 times, so we'll plug in negative 1 for 1, since we know what that is. And then 3, we know it to be negative positive three, 3, so minus the positive 3 equals 1. And so here I have x equal to 2. And so here we have our solution of 2, negative 1. Okay. All right, so I'm going to solve this system and I want you to see how I do it. And I'm going to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing in a very clear and uh, a clear manner. And then I'll give you a very algorithmic approach to doing this. And so we'll show you how to do it. So here, these operations do not interchange, uh, do not change the solution of the system. Okay, so if I interchange one, one equation for another, it just means if I label this one one, this one three, this one two, I haven't really done Whatever, whatever x, y, and z solved this before, we'll solve it still, right? That's perfectly logical. Okay, so if I change the order um, of the, my equation, that doesn't that doesn't change the solution of the system. If I multiply one multiply a system by uh, one of the equations by non-zero constant, that doesn't change it, right? So here, if I add two, switch that to a four, switch that to a six, switch this to a two. So if I multiply everything by two. If it's solved it before, it'll solve it again because I'm allowed to multiply both uh, both sides of an equation by that, and I only have to do it to one, right? I don't have to do it to one. Then this one, if I add a non-zero multiple of one equation to another, it's the same thing like we added the equations before. So if I add this equation to this equation or two times this equation to this equation, that doesn't change the solution for the same reason it didn't change the solution before. Because here I'm at, if I say I add, say I add, this equation to this equation, right? It's like adding 13 to this side. It's like adding 13 to this side. But instead of writing 13 on this side, I'm going to write x plus 2y minus z, because that's equivalent to 13, right? Whatever solution it is will be equivalent to 13. So that doesn't change the solution. And so we're going to use these three things um, to get equivalent systems to make it look like this. Right. Once we have it like this, we can back substitute and achieve our goal. And there's a very, very systematic way you want to do this. And the very systematic way you want to do this is first you want to eliminate this, then this term, then this term, and then you're there. Right. Because if you eliminate, and if you eliminate the terms in that order, this one, this one, this one, you'll get a system. Do that. Now, how do you do that? Well, you usually just add one equation to another. And so we'll, we'll be doing that. Now you think, well, why not eliminate this, then this, then this? Well, if you do not, if you do it that way, when you, this term will reemerge, and then you're just kind of going in circles. So please always, always do it. This term, this term, this term, almost always destroy those terms in that order. Okay. If not, you're just going to go in circles. I can explain. Explaining why it would take longer, you guys are ready to go. 
So let's let's do this. So I am going to show you all the steps in detail for this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, I'm going to take equation two minus equation one, and I'm going to plug that into equation two. So I'm going to take equation two and add a negative of equation one to it. Why? Because that gets rid of the x, which gets rid of this, which is my first law. So I'm going to write that out longhand. So equation I'll write it out as I have here. So let's do equation two. So this is my equation two. And then I'm going to add to it a negative of my first equation. So x plus two y minus three z equals negative one. Okay, so if I add that up, I get zero x plus four y minus four z equals 12. So we have this. So I'm going to plug that in. So my new system looks like the following. We all have x minus 2y. Wouldn't that be 5z? Oh, someone say something? Or, oh, no, never mind, never mind, never mind. I made a mistake, my bad. OK, that's a z, not a 2. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. I really should convert over to these z's, but I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I just haven't. Um, and then it'll be zero. So I will leave out the zero and just write plus four y minus four z equals to 12. And then here we didn't do anything to equation three. So I have three x plus two y minus five z equals three. Okay. All right. So the next thing I want to do is get rid of this term. So in order to get rid of this term, I'm going to just add minus, I'm going to take equation three, and then I'm going to minus out equation one, and then I'm going to put it in where equation three is at. So I'm adding, I'm taking equation three, I'm adding negative one, or negative one times the first equation term. Okay, and so I'll write that one out. I'm not going to write these equations out after this first one, um, just to save time. It takes a while to write it all out, and I'll show you how to do it kind of in your head. But for the first ones, I think it's very important to know exactly what I'm doing. That way, when I go to shorthand, I don't lose you. So we add this up, I get 0x by design, I get 8y minus, minus 14z equals 0. And so my new system is the following. Um, so I have x minus 2y plus 3z equals to 1. I'll have plus 4y minus 4z equals to 12. And then I'll have plus 8y. I guess I don't need the pluses up front. If you have them, it doesn't hurt nothing. Minus 14z equals to 0. Okay, so I have eliminated this one, I eliminated this one, and now I want to eliminate this one. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add, I'm going to take equation three and do what to it? What am I going to do to this, to get rid of this? I'm going to add one multiple of what equation? I'll give you a hint, it's a negative of some equation. Negative two of two. And the reason why I'm choosing this equation, because if I choose this equation, no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to introduce an x back here. So that's bad. So I'm going to use this equation, right? And so as we clear off x's, and then, OK, if I'm clearing out y's, I only have the choices between these two, right? And then here. And so here, I'll clear out the y's behind. So here, once we do this, we'll have. Uh, 8y minus 14z equals to 0 minus 8y minus or plus 8z equals 
minus one four. We'll add that up and I get minus 60 equals to negative 24. And then here I can write out my system again. My system is going to be a little bit funny. There we go. And so I have x minus 2y minus plus 3z equals to 1. I have 4y minus 4z equals to 12. And I have minus 60. Z minus 24. Okay, so now I have it looking something like this, right? And so I can back substitute. How do I do that? I just solve this for Z. Oops, that's equal to, hold on, I forgot an equal sign. Equal minus 24. Okay, so what does this mean? Z equals to 4, right? If I solve this for Z, I get Z equals to 4. Then I'll plug in that into here. So 4Y minus 4 times 4 equals 12. Solve that out. Um, just an easy way to, I can just get rid of a 4 everywhere before I even do any math. Move that over, I get y equals to 7. And then I'll have x minus 2 times 7 plus 3 times 4 equals 1. That means x equals, we said negative 14 plus 12, so it's minus 2, and I want it equal to 1, so it's 3. Okay. And so my solution here is 3, 7, 4. Or you could write it as x equals 3, y equals 7, z equals 4. Okay. All right, I will let you copy that down. All right, so let's do the next page. All right, so this, this is where things get messy. All right, so I am going to try to draw this the best I can. All right, so here, does anyone know what this is an equation of? If I type this in, does anyone know that's what it what that is? It's an equation of what? I don't even think this will do it for me. I can try. I don't even know if this does that. Does anyone know what this is? Think about it for a second. You may know, you may not. using this. This, my friends, is an equation to a plane. So this is the linear version of the 3D object. It's an equation of a plane. And this is pretty standard where this is, um, pretty sure this is the x, this, this is the y, this, uh, this is the x, the green is the x, this is the y, this is the z. Pretty sure that's how standardly drawn something like this. All right, so let me sh Oh, screw it. Um, and so let me type in, let me type this in real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's type this in and then I will attempt to draw it. So hold on. Make sure this is the same as the one before. So instead of doing intersections of lines, these are, let me 
do want to show this to you. X plus two Y minus Z equals 13. And then we'll have three X plus two Y minus five Z. Z <laughs> equals three. So here we have an equation of three planes, right? And it's kind of a mess, but they all intersect up there at this point. Um, let me, oops, sorry for making everyone dizzy. Let me, I, we, a way to just reset this so I don't have it all ruined. Anyways, here you have our point of intersection. The intersection of the three planes is how it works. I'm going to draw that a little bit more simply. Um, so now here, I'm just going to draw, let's see, let's test my drawing skills today. All right, so here, if I have a plane, Let's just say we have a plane here such that um, we have another plane going in this way and then another plane going this way. We'll continue down and here. There we go. We have roughly three planes. We have a, this plane right here. I guess I should show us different colors. If it's not too late for that. So we have this plane right here. We have this plane right here. It intersects into this plane, right? And then we have the blue plane right there. And then all these will intersect, kind of come into some point here. And that's our solution. Okay. So here, if I have this red plane, this, this plane, this plane, they all intersect with the solution. The next one's easy to draw. Let's pretend I have three planes and they're all parallel each other or at least don't intersect and here we can just draw that as different planes so if I had like a sack of sheet of papers that's and I chose and I just chose those papers to be x far apart ends up not doing that and then here we're going to draw the hardest one I guess it's not the hardest one um this down up uh, over and down, and then here I'll have up and down, and then I'm just going to draw the other half so that we this way and down and then up. This one will be blue. all intersect kind of along this line. So here I have kind of like a pinwheel. I was looking at it from the top. The top view would be this. And so everything along this line right here is a solution. Okay. <laughs> um, everything along that line is a solution. Okay. So here, if we look down at the top, we have a, a line of solutions. Okay. And so, so here are three different methods. It took us a second to draw it. I am just going to quickly run through these. Um, 
And so I'm going to show you shorthand. So now we're going to do this inner. Uh, we're going to do this inner head. We're going to do it shorthand. Um, that way I can do this. And so I'm just going to write adding negative two. So instead of taking two, adding minus two of equation one and putting that into and putting that into equation two. Instead of writing that, I'm just going to do this little, I'm going to take this equation times it by negative two and add it to this equation. So that's all this is encapsulated by that. And so it gives me x plus 2y minus 2z equals to 1. Now if I do the negative 2 in, so 2x minus negative 2. Uh, so here, I'll show you how to do this. 2x minus negative 2 times x, which would leave us 0x. And so we just leave that as a 0. 2x minus negative 2 of 2y would give us minus 2y. So we'll write that in. And then here um, we have a negative z minus negative 2 of 2z gives us positive 3z. So write that in. And then we'll have 6 minus negative 2 of 1, which is equal to 4. Okay. And then we did not change this one whatsoever. So 4 add 4. We just rewrite equation three. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. And I'm just going to just only do the shorthand. So I'm going to take negative three of this row and add it to this row. So I just simplify as it. And this is pretty standard. Most people abbreviate it this way. And so here I have x plus 2y minus 2z. Did not change that at all. This I did not change at all. So it says minus 3z. So you just write those down. Here we'll have 3x minus 3x my, times x times a negative 3. That's 0 by design. And I'll have 4 minus uh, 3 times 2y. So that'll give us minus 2y. And then I'll have negative 3z minus a negative 2z. So this is plus 3z. Um, Did not copy that down right from here to here. That should have been positive. Sorry. Um, and then here I have five times the negative three, so that gives me a two. Okay, so that's my new system. Be very careful with how you do these. And then here, the last thing I want to do, if I want to get rid of this two y, I'm just going to add a negative one to this to that. And so here, I'll do that up here. So we have x plus two y minus 2z equals to 1. That didn't change. We didn't change our second equation, so we write that one down as well. So we get 4. And we did not. And so here, if I'm adding a negative of this, that gives me 0. That gives me 0. And that gives me negative 2. So I get 0 equals to minus 2. And this is never possible. 0 never equals negative 2. And so in this case, I know it's no solution. And if I graph this puppy, if I graph this puppy, it would look something like this. Yeah, or except they'd be in a different angle, right? So that's no solution. I'll let you write this down, and then we'll go ahead and finish this. We have six minutes, uh, which should be plenty of time, because the other one falls out real quick. In fact, I'm just going to go for it, and then if you need to go back to write something down, I'll flip back to it at the end. Okay, so here, let's solve this system. And so you do not need to do, since since we do, let's see how we can say this. I can do two operations at once as long as it makes sense. So here I'm going to get rid of this, this one, and this one. So I'm getting rid of those two. And that makes sense to do together because I'm just going to rewrite this down and then when I do this, I'm just going to rewrite this down. So it's just it's just expedient just to do both operations at once. And so here, this is minus 2, and this one is also minus 2. So let's do it one at a time. So the first row, we didn't do anything to. So this is x minus y plus 5z equals negative 2. And we just leave that. For the second row, we to get rid of this x, we're multiplying, we're adding a negative 2 with this row. So that gives me negative 2, gives me 0. 3 minus a minus uh, 2y would give me positive 2. It's a positive 3y overall. Okay. This gives me 
um, four minus uh, 10z would give us minus six z and that, and we'll have six minus the minus two. So that'd be positive six. And then we'll do the same thing on this row. So negative two times that, and we did the zero by design. We'll have four plus two, so that'd be six y. We'll have negative two minus 10, which will give us negative 12 z. And then here I'll have eight plus the four, which gives us 12. All right. So it makes sense to do both of these at the same time. That way I don't. That way I don't have to copy one, do another one, then copy it again. So for this, it makes sense. The next thing we want to get rid of is this, is a 6y. In order to do that, we're going to do the following. We're going to just take negative 2 of this to do that. All right. So in this case, we're going to have x minus y plus 5z equals to 2, or minus 2, sorry. Let me forget my negative. We're going to copy down this row because we didn't change that one either. Equals six. And then here, if I take negative two of this row, so six minus two times the three gives me a zero by design, right? And that's what we chose it to do. A negative 12 minus two of negative that also gives us zero. So that outside equals zero. And this minus plus two, negative two of that is also zero. And so what does this mean? This right here means infinitely many solutions. So if you ever see the zero equals zero, you can infinitely many. If you zero equals a constant, that means no solutions. Doesn't matter how many, if it's two, three, 15 uh, things. So in this case, I am going to just say Z is equal to T, same thing we did before. Just in this case, I'm gonna let Z equal to T. And that way when I, here I'll get a solution for y and a solution for x. So let's just go ahead and do that. So if I let z equal to t, I'll plug that into two. Equation two here. I'll get three y minus six t equal to six. All right. And then um, if I solve that out, I'll get y equals to two t plus Um, and then if I plug both of these back into one, I'll get x plus x minus two t plus two <clears throat> plus five t equals to negative two. All right, so here, let's go ahead and just multiply and just get rid of that's a minus. Um, here I can get rid of the negative twos from both sides, add that up, move it to the other side. So I get x is equal to negative three t. Oops, let me write that a little clear, negative three t. So if I was going to write out a solution, it'd be minus three t. That's two t plus two plus t. And that's my solution. Some books and some people do not say that z equal to t. I like to do this. I like to do this that way I know I'm messing with an infinite set of solution and not the variable that it represents. I know it sounds weird, but even though z equals t and t equal to z, because if you just left it to z and back substitute, just say z equals to z, it's kind of a silly way of saying it. It's a some people write this, they'll write z equals to z, and then do all this again, they'll get minus three z, two z plus two z. And then anything you choose for z is a solution, right? I like to leave it as a different variable to just clear some confusion in the calculation, okay? All right, and it is exactly time. So, 
That's it for today. Does anyone need to see the other page real quick? 